Now hey guys, welcome back to the channel, another Swiss 001 video. Now welcome back to the flight simulator at a random floating airport which I built here into the flight simulator some time ago, it doesn't really matter. Today we're going to talk about a very very interesting, you know, airplane emergency or maybe even crash scenario that can happen which we've never talked about. Um, so how do I segue into the actual topic of the video? You know what, let's just try getting this 737 800 landed on this pretty short floating airport runway. Okay, let's just do this landing here. All right, there we go. That was a pretty routine, but a pretty nice landing there. And we've also stopped here. Okay, but let's check out the touchdown and uh, let's pay close attention to what I did here. Now, there we go. You can see we were coming in quite nicely. But while we were still flying here, while we were still in midair, I pulled the thrust reverser, which is something that the 737 actually allows you to do. Yes, when you're below like six or five feet above ground, you can pull the thrust reversers, at least here on this 737. 37. And by the way, if you don't know what reverse thrust is, it's well, first of all, then you're basically lost when it comes to aviation. And second of all, reverse thrust basically is that the engines don't push air behind them, but in front of them. It's basically, you know, it's reversed. Reverse gear for engines, which is another one of those tools that an airliner uses to stop. And there we go. We have used it quite nicely. And, you know, the thrust reverse. Well, what the hell has happened here? Yeah, whatever. The, the, the reverse thrust allows something like a 737 to stop on this very short distance. Now, I've already mentioned this, most airliners, or just like the 737, allow you to only apply these thrust reversers when you're like very close to the ground, which uh, makes sense, of course, because if you do it in midair, then that's not going to turn out very well. Um, I mean, there are jet planes that allow you to pull thrust reversers literally in midair at 30,000 feet, like uh, I think the C-17 does that. Yeah, this is the C-17 Globemaster, not particularly a civilian passenger plane, but what this plane is known for is being able to literally fall out of the sky. Let's just do that real quick. Let's just go to like 30,000 feet. And uh, yeah, let's just try getting this plane down as quickly as possible, which is something that's quite important to a, a passenger plane, of course. Let's just go ahead and do that real quick. Let's just pull the thrust reversers. There we go. We can easily do that here in midair, and we are falling down from the skies now. There we go. We are descending at a descent rate of above 10,000 feet per minute, which means that, you know, when you're flying at an altitude of 30,000 feet, you're down to the ground within three minutes, which is crazy. I mean, 30,000 feet, that's the normal cruising altitude for an airliner or something. Yeah, again, the C-17, known for being the plane that is able to fall out of the skies and even pull this kind of maneuvers. Probably that's not allowed, but we just did it anyway. Now we have dropped out of the skies, literally, and we can easily recover this by, you know, going out of the reverse gear of, of the engine and uh, having it run again. There we go. We're now at pretty much the 1,000 feet, even though we were at 30,000 feet just a few minutes ago. That's crazy. Yeah, again, this is a plane developed for being able to do that. Um, but let's just see how well an airliner handles this kind of operation. All right, so welcome aboard the 737 again. Now in a version that allows you to pull reverse thrust at any time, even at 30,000 feet, which doesn't work in real life. Okay, so let's just go to 30,000 feet. <laughs> do the flight simulator where we can just sheet. All right, I do have the autopilot activated now. It's just simply flying around the plane. Meanwhile, I'm still able to control throttle, which is what I'm definitely going to do, and I'm probably going to want to put gear up as well. Now, let's uh, go ahead and just pull reverse thrust, which is something we can do. There we go. And as you can see, we are stopping. We are losing speed quite rapidly, and we are losing altitude. The um, autopilot is trying to fix that. But actually, so far, the plane is flying quite nicely. Right now, we have seriously lost some speed, which is why the Autopilot has deactivated itself, and we are starting to literally drop out of the skies. Um, so far I have the plane fully under control, which works perfectly fine. But in an emergency like this, where the reverse thrust would literally apply itself without me being able to reset it properly, I would probably actually go as far as um, turning off the engines. Anything else doesn't help. Luckily enough, we are at 27,000 feet, which is plenty, and a diversion airport would be literally down ahead. All right, there we go. This will be a spicy 
approach there. Okay, it's just turning off the engines might have not been super smart because something here is definitely broken now. Okay, but we are actually approaching quite nicely still. Let's just come in for a normal landing. Just generally a, a dead stick landing. We don't need to land in any Hudson or something. All right, there we go. Maybe a little bit of an abnormal landing, but at this point here on this channel, we have landings like this every single day. Perfect landing without any engines or something. That worked out quite well. Well, you may wonder now, well, how did I get the idea for this whole pulling reverse thrust in mid-air thing? Well, it's basically because it has happened in real life before, where a passenger plane, in that case a 767, accidentally pulled reverse thrust in mid-air at 26,000 feet, and well, that actually resulted in a plane crash. Fatal one, actually, which was something I wanted to take a look at. Yeah, let's hop into a 767 to recreate that. All right, welcome aboard the 767. Let's go ahead. If this plane a cruising altitude, 30,000 feet will do just nicely. Okay, let's uh, engage autopilot again. There we go. The plane is flying itself now. And let's put gear up again as well. <clears throat> now, let's try to recreate what exactly happened. Now, on that flight that happened in 1991 on Lada Air, a 7 67's left engine literally, you know, deployed reverse thrust in mid-air. It's something that I'm not able to recreate very easily because, well, when I press the reverse button, nothing will happen because, you know, that is locked when you're above, like, six feet, right? But what I can actually do is set up a failure, an emergency, where the reversers will deploy anyway. Now, that exactly happened on the left engine only, not on the second engine, only on engine one. Let's just see if that works. There we go. That has worked. Now, something that happened now let's pause this by the way something that happened was that of course there we go reverse thrust was applied on the left engine the thing is the pilots were not for some reason not able to undo the reverse thrust so they were left with this situation here and uh, what happened then was that the plane spun out of control which hasn't happened yet let's see what's gonna happen even if we don't you know turn off the engine let's pretend to try everything to do to put this engine to normal mode which actually does not work i cannot do that either now uh, quite really, the left engine is unresponsive. The thing is, actually, though, we are not spinning out of control here, at least in the simulator. That's interesting, because th that's generally what happened in 1991 on that flight in the 767. The plane spun out of control because of all that, and that is really not happening at all here. <laughs> well, the only thing that's kind of happening is that the plane is turning to the left now, uh, but what we can simply do is just cut off the left engine, just keep on flying on the right one, maybe try finding some kind of diversion airport, like the one that we've got below. I don't, I'm not even going to attempt to land on it because, you know, obviously we're not going to crash. We even have one engine left, which works perfectly fine. Now, by the way, to just give another example of a plane that can easily pull reverse thrust in mid-flight, uh, for example, here we've got a Pilatus PC-6. Here we go, let's just pull reverse thrust. Now, this is obviously a high-performance aircraft. You know, it's not a, a very big aircraft, but it still has a turboprop engine, which is quite impressive. But a plane like this can easily pull reverse thrust as well, giving it, you know, a lot of performance. Which is very good, especially for use at small mountain airfields or something. This is another plane made for pulling a rush thrust in mid-flight, which is not military. Uh, but so, yeah guys, thank you for watching today's video. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.